Okay guys, little update since it's really hard to talk and hunt. <laughs> also filming and hunting is kind of difficult. I hope these videos do all right, but um, yeah. The last time I was in here speaking to you guys, I was, it was before I set up the blind and kind of put it in the spot. And honestly, that spot was fire. It was opening day rifle season. So I didn't have any luck. Obviously you guys didn't see much um, while I was filming in that blind and then my phone died maybe like an hour before dusk and I didn't see much except for like a few does before that. Right at dark, like it was it was too dark to see but the th three does that I had seen earlier came back like running and I'm like, oh, something's chasing them. Sure enough, a really nice like huge eight point. I could just barely make out his antlers. There's no way I could have gotten a clean shot, but it's just he was busting through those trees after those does. I mean, it was right near the blind, but I just couldn't get a shot. I couldn't see. It was too dark. Um, it is definitely full swing rut though. So lots of signs and just chasing does all around. So I'm hoping I've located the does like the next time I filmed in the blind, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday evening. Um, I got some footage of those uh, three more does and they hung out around the blind for like 45 minutes, just munching on grass and stuff, munching on clover. And uh, I was hoping and expecting a buck to come out and he never did. I did a few grunts with a custom call that one of you guys sent me, Tim. Thank you. That thing is awesome. Um, but it just didn't happen. The bucks weren't coming out. So I'm going to give that spot a rest for a little bit and my elevated blind. And I'm just going to go old school Indian style. Um, probably not the best approach, but you know what? I feel like switching it up. So I'm going way in the mountains way on the other side of the property and see what's going on over there that's what i'm gonna do i might try to locate an old tree stand or i might just pop a squat under a tree yeah that's the plan it's gonna be a long day and i'm not coming out till dark and this is also right where the coyote den is too so maybe we'll hear them later i'm not really doing like spot and stalk but i'm exploring a new area so i'm hoping that i can get some good footage on the way there and then once i get there and kind of set up but Bear with me. As always, fingers crossed. As I was sneaking through the woods on foot, I spotted a doe with a mature fawn. They were really curious and started walking almost right up to me. I actually had to try to shoo them off at one point and get them to go a different direction. They would not leave this little area and I was trying to cross over to the other ridge top. I then found a turkey quill, which is now my lucky feather that I will always take hunting with me. I kept trekking around and I found a small clearing on the edge of some really thick woods between two ridges. There's also an old tree stand that was really sketchy and the tree that it was on was dead. It was completely hollow. But, I decided to climb it anyways. He was a small six point, actually had a pretty nice body size.
I couldn't believe what he did next. As you can see, he starts to lay down with his front two legs and then totally plops down on the ground. At this point, I realized that I had ventured into a bedding area and it was going to be very important for me to be as quiet as possible and let this buck leave this area without ever knowing that I was there. And also, I was hoping that maybe another larger buck might come through. He actually ended up resting there for about an hour, and you can kind of say we're best friends at this point, almost cuddle buddies. He ended up, after this, kind of trekking around the stand in this area for about another hour, so I had plenty of time to watch his mannerisms, see what he was eating on, I even watched him uh, pee on his scent glands, which was really cool to see in person. I've never seen it actually happen in the wild like that. And he never once saw me. He never smelled me. I was downwind. It was perfect, perfect scenario where I was. So I was able to be completely unnoticed. And he thought he was just enjoying his little home bedding area. He ended up staying so long and doing this back and forth prancing that I decided to start not messing with him but kind of doing a little experiment with my butt grunt and doe bleats just to see how he would react. story for you guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm shaking. Oh. Alright, so I'm in the farmhouse so I can talk. 
That was the best freaking morning ever. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm sorry I didn't film, but honestly, it just got light about 30 minutes ago out, so there's really not any way I could have filmed. Um, but so I woke up at like five, been planning all morning in my head where to go, because a lot of people in my family have been hunting over here and kind of, I don't know, I, I had the last time I went out, saw the six pointer that laid down next to me so I kind of wanted to keep that as like a little sacred zone for a while and I didn't really know where to go I started off it was dark out so I walked over to the barn kind of sat in there for a minute I just didn't feel like it was a good spot so I turned around checked the fields to see if anything was coming out I didn't see anything so I'm like shoot I'm gonna head back over to the sacred zone I got about a third of the way there and something just told me to like crouch down in this thick brush area it just it just felt good it felt and it was it was I could kind of sneak along there because the leaves were still wet so you guys oh, I heard this the this buck grunting like up here kind of towards the barn area but he was like Burr. And I was like, was that what I think it was? So unfortunately, of course, I did not have my buck rump, but maybe that was a good thing. So I did a, a, a doe bleat of one of those little cans that you flip over and it does the doe bleat. So sure enough, a doe comes running down towards me. I see her. I'm thinking, okay, this buck is definitely chasing her. This is perfect. I got to just be able to get a shot through all this thick stuff and like crouch down. Don't let them see me. It's just going to take one to blow my cover. I'm rambling, but you guys, I can't wait to go find this guy. Ooh. Um. So anyway, she actually kept going. I never saw the buck, but I heard him grunt a few more times. She circled back, came back down. I had my eye on her, and I was just waiting, hoping, praying that he was going to be following her. And he was, and it was so hard for me to keep my just everything together I was trembling shaking so hard and I was trying to find him in the scope because it was such, such thick brush and he opened up into this like one little tiny v and I blew and he tumbled down the hill into like the creek bottom and he was grunting when he fell he was like burr, burr. he did two more grunts like oh my gosh you guys that was just such a like just chilling like just adrenaline rush feeling like watching that buck chase that doe and those noises and kind of like having to make split decisions like that that is what I live for that was awesome oh I'm so glad I woke up early this morning I'm probably gonna give it a little bit longer and then I'm gonna go find that buck so gosh thank you dear lord Jesus oh my gosh Woo. You guys, I had a perfect heart shot. It's an eight point. He's gorgeous. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Well, you guys. Here he is. I did it. <laughs> Made it happen this morning. 
all before seven o'clock. I couldn't be more grateful. I mean, this morning was just, it was magical. It's one that I'll never, ever forget. The adrenaline, the getting to see the rut that up close and personal in action. Oh man, it's just no better feeling. This is, this is what it's all about. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. It's honestly such a bittersweet feeling. Um, harvesting an animal. This is definitely more than just a sport for me. This is a way of life. And um, I'm just so grateful for this animal. I'd say a pretty perfect shot on him. Straight in the heart, he dropped. He dropped immediately, fell kind of right here, and I thought he went all the way down in the creek, but as you guys can see, this tree kind of grabbed him, so it's not too steep of a ravine, but it's not going to be very fun dragging this guy out. I might have to use the side-by-side uh, -side for some help. I wish I had gotten more of this hunt on camera, but like I said, it was so dark, and this, this happened probably 20 minutes after first light, and... It was just, everything was so fast. Everything was happening at once. And I wasn't really in one spot. I wasn't in a blind or a tree stand. I was kind of like, not spot and stalk, but sort of. Once I heard some, some um, once I heard some movement, I decided to kind of crouch down in that area. And I just happened to be in the perfect spot. Oh my gosh, it just doesn't seem real. This is awesome. Every struggle hunt, every long, deep hike into the woods, every hot day, every freezing morning, every freezing evening, every scared feeling walking through the woods at dark or, um, you know, missed opportunities, second guessing, food plots, um, <laughs> everything, everything has made this so worth it and i couldn't be more grateful venison back straps coming up <laughs> well i'm gonna get this guy out of here and uh woo, i'm so excited <laughs> Hey guys, so my dad, my mom, and my brother, the whole fam, came over to help me drag this deer out, and I gutted it. Um, I've got it in the back of my truck. I'm going to take it to the processor. Good stuff. 